On Thursday, February 18, 2021, NASA's Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter are slated to touch down at Jezero Crater on the Red Planet after a seven-month journey from Earth. The mission was launched back on July 30, 2020, from Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. NASA believes that the 28-mile-wide Jezero Crater, Perseverance's landing site, was once the home of an ancient Delta Lake system. As such, it's hypothesized that ancient signs of microbial life may be found around the site. But while the region around the landing site could potentially provide scientific insights, it's also NASA's most challenging landing site yet. As such, the rover is armed with NASA's new EDL tech, known as Terrain Relative Navigation. NASA recently tested its new lunar landing system, SPLICE, of which Terrain Relative Navigation is a part of, on Blue Origin's NS-13 flight. With Terrain Relative Navigation, the spacecraft compares live data from the landing site to onboard images of the site in an attempt to correctly identify the landing location. The Mars 2020 rover, or Perseverance, is the fifth rover that NASA has sent to Mars. NASA's first rover, Sojourner, landed on Mars back in 1997. The lab was going, what are these guys doing? Because all they could see is the most embarrassing failures possible. Added to the challenges was the addition of an unexpected passenger. That silly little rover. It was not popular with anybody. In the almost 30 years that have followed, NASA has made significant improvements in terms of its rover tech. According to NASA JPL, Perseverance is its most sophisticated rover so far. The Perseverance rover design is largely informed by NASA's Curiosity rover. However, this time around, there are some unique features and differences. They look similar, but you can notice immediately that the wheels are different. I'll speak a little bit about the wheels in a moment, but Percy's got a new set of kicks, and she is um, ready for trouble on this Martian surface with, the, with her new, new wheels. The Mars 2020 mission has four goals. To determine whether life ever existed on Mars, to characterize the climate of Mars, to characterize the geology of Mars, and to prepare for human exploration. As you can probably tell, these goals sort of can be divided into two categories. One is to help us better understand what Mars was like in the past, and the second is to help us determine what Mars might be like in the future, and what it might be like for humans on Mars in the future. What's on board? Perseverance payloads, scientific instruments, and technology demonstrations. The rover is equipped with several payloads, scientific instruments, and technology demonstrations that will help it achieve its mission objectives. There are two zoomable panoramic cameras and a laser microimager, known as MassCam Z, respectively located on the rover's mast or neck, an ultraviolet spectrometer and an X ray spectrometer located on the rover's robotic arm. The instruments are known as Sherlock and Pixel. And there's also a subsurface radar and weather station, RIMFAX and META. And last but not least, there's MOXIE. For the purposes of this video, I thought we'd take a closer look at two of these, META and MOXIE, as both will be instrumental in terms of setting the stage for human exploration of Mars. If Mars is to one day become humanity's second home planet, then it's absolutely crucial that we continually increase our understanding of the planet. And perhaps it'd be even better if we do so before we send humans to the surface. The environment is always a challenge for humans. It simultaneously provides us with the ingredients necessary to support life, while also quite literally at times trying to kill us. On Mars, it has the potential to be quite similar. Although for now, it's heavily skewed in the latter direction. Mars is notorious for its intense, sometimes planet-wide, dust storms, frigid temperatures, an extremely thin CO2-rich atmosphere, and its reduced gravity, one-third that of Earth's. Due to the presence of a thin atmosphere, the planetary surface is also exposed to a higher degree of cosmic radiation than here on Earth. These factors all have the potential to provide unique challenges when it comes to constructing a base on Mars. According to NASA, winds in a Mars dust storm only reach up to about 60 miles per hour, so the winds themselves aren't typically violent enough to cause significant structural damage. 
However, what the winds can do is stir up enough dust to cause a problem, especially when it comes to electrical and mechanical devices. This can present a problem for NASA's rovers and landers during global dust storms, which occur approximately every five and a half years, and could be a potential problem for humans in the future on Mars. MEDA, or the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer, on board Perseverance is expected to yield insight on the Martian climate. According to NASA, META consists of a suite of environmental sensors that will measure wind speed and direction, temperature and humidity, and also the amount and size of dust particles in the Martian atmosphere. Now we've got MOXIE. MOXIE, or the Mars Oxygen ISRU experiment, which is about the size of a car battery or a toaster, will extract carbon dioxide from Mars's rich CO2 atmosphere and convert it to pure oxygen using a process known as solid oxide electrolysis. According to a statement by Assad Abu Baker, a MOXIE systems engineer at NASA's JPL, MOXIE is designed to make about 6 to 10 grams of oxygen per hour, just enough for a small dog to breathe. MOXIE is expected to inform the design of future full-scale oxygen generators for Mars. NASA scientists and engineers believe that such systems will be instrumental not only to provide life support systems for astronauts, but also may be critical for making rocket fuel on Mars. According to MOXIE principal investigator, what people typically ask me is whether MOXIE is being developed so astronauts have something to breathe. But rockets breathe millions of times as much oxygen as people. Fortunately, the rocket has to breathe only for a few minutes during liftoff. But even so, it needs about 25 tons of oxygen to do that, while the crew needs only about a ton for the entire mission. Many ways to make rocket fuel on Mars. SpaceX's Starship uses liquid methane as fuel and LOX as the oxidizer. To make rocket fuel on Mars, SpaceX plans to use the Sabatier process, a process that combines CO2 and hydrogen to form methane and oxygen. SpaceX plans to obtain the hydrogen through mining water on Mars and splitting the water molecule into its constituents, hydrogen and oxygen, through a process known as electrolysis. SpaceX so far doesn't seem too keen on bringing the hydrogen directly from Earth, mainly because hydrogen is difficult to store. There's the problem of cryogenic boil-off, and SpaceX right now with Starship is trying to shed as much mass as possible. So as you can see, SpaceX and NASA have slightly different approaches when it comes to making rocket fuel on Mars, in terms of Starship and MOXIE. But both processes can lead to the production of rocket fuel. Perseverance is sort of the foundation stone of a much larger mission, a Mars sample return mission. While many landers and rovers have touched down on Mars over the course of the past 50 plus years, we've never returned a sample from Mars. But that's expected to change soon. NASA and ESA's sample return mission architecture goes something like this. Perseverance is expected to collect samples using its coring drill and stow them in a sample tube. There are 43 of these in all and the tubes are expected to be stored in the rover's belly until a fetch rover comes along. An ESA fetch rover will then collect the samples acquired by Perseverance and deliver them to a lander equipped with a small launch vehicle known as a Mars Ascent Vehicle. The Mars Ascent Vehicle will then rendezvous with an orbiter which will stow the samples in a capsule and deploy it for return to Earth. NASA and ESA are still finalizing the details of the mission. Will SpaceX land humans on Mars first or will we return a sample from the Red Planet before that? Perhaps a super compelling technology demonstration also along for the ride is the Mars Ingenuity Helicopter. The 4-pound Ingenuity Helicopter is said to be the first aerial vehicle to arrive on another planet from Earth. The vehicle will be fully autonomous and according to NASA, will demonstrate rotorcraft flight in Mars's extremely thin atmosphere. With its first flight test, NASA JPL will solely attempt to get Ingenuity off the ground. If the first flight test is successful, NASA will proceed with up to four more flight tests within a 30-day Mars window, or 31-day Earth window. Perhaps lessons learned from Ingenuity will help us to create next generation vehicles to traverse the red planet in a faster way.